Hey guys, so today we are looking at my Garmin 630. We're gonna look at my setup, uh, how I, I use it for uh, easy runs, what about workouts, um, you know, different screens and different things that are useful as a runner. So you might have a, you know, a different brand of a watch or a different model of the Garmin, uh, which is fine because the principles are really mostly all the same. So. Here we have like my different profiles, right? You can see run, run pure, um, race, workout, indoor, bike, etc. We'll get to these. We'll go through some of them, not all of them. Let's just start with my basic screen. And yeah, I have a cracked screen, by the way. You can see that now, but it works. Uh, let's go with my basic run profile. So this is the screen that I see 90% of the time that I'm running, okay? Uh, and this is a type of screen that I would recommend that most of you guys probably use for most of your runs. Uh, it's showing us the distance, uh, and up there is the time. If we got the GPS to this very easy timer, uh, and then that little thing up there that came now, it's just that shows me the GPS signal, the green dots, and it's sort of looking for a heart rate monitor and, and the battery. So timer, distance, pace, minutes per kilometer or minutes per mile, and heart rate. All right, so at this one, on this one screen, I have a good setup for keeping control of the important uh, metrics while running, right? How far am I running? How fast am I running? What kind of intensity am I at in terms of my heart rate? And I don't really need more than that while I'm running. I have an extra screen there, which is just the clock, the watch, showing me the, the time of day. I, I think that's a practical thing to have as well uh, while you're out doing your training runs. So that's just an easy run setup. You could have a lot more. There's a lot of different options. Like, for example, if I go here, um, I can choose different uh, right timer fields, like lap time, last lap time, average lap time pace fields of different sorts. Uh, we have uh, things like uh, heart rate fields, dynamics, right? Uh, vertical oscillation, all these things, um, cadence, stuff like that. It's, it's useful if that's what you're working on, but for most easier runs, you just need that sort of setup, I think. That's what I do anyway. Um, I have one that's, uh, that I just call Run Pure, which is just showing me the distance because I think that's a great way to do it if you are if you want to head out and not really worry about the pace or the intensity and just relax and, and enjoy whatever and not look at your watch all the time. You just put it on run pure and you keep track of your distance. If you don't even want to see the distance and just run completely blind, so to speak, of course, you could run without a watch or you could just put the watch to like you know, show your direction, like if you're heading north or south or whatever, but I like to see the distance at the very least. So that's run pure. We'll skip that one. I'm, I'm sort of building a new profile there. I haven't finished it. Then let's take a look at the race profile. So during a race, um, I want those same things uh, almost, but you can see it's the same distance, timer, pace, but then instead of heart rate, I actually have average pace. And that's because during a race, I don't really want to look at my heart rate because it's it's going to be much higher than it would at the normal training run at the same pace because I'm nervous, I'm excited, it's adrenaline, it's right. So and and it's just sort of distracting. So it's better during a race to go by feel and also to have practiced the race pace before, so you know that this is a likely pace to stick to, and you can just focus on pace instead. An average pace shows you. Uh, well, it shows your average pace, so you know at the end of the race, if you want to finish a three-hour marathon or sub-three-hour marathon, for example, you have to have an average pace of 4.16, uh, I guess, per kilometer, 4.15, 4.16, I think it's 4.16, uh, which means that uh, maybe a part of the course is slower than other parts and your average pace might go up a little bit, but then you can bring it down again. So, But you want to stay as close to the average pace as possible, usually. Uh, and I also have another screen which just shows my average heart rate. So I could go and glance at my average heart rate, just have an idea if I wanted to. But I wouldn't really need that. I could just go with that. So that's my race screen. By the way, if uh, anyone's interested in getting this watch maybe or buying a Garmin watch, uh, you could do that on Amazon. 
Uh, I'll put a link, an affiliate link in the description where you could click that link and go in and buy this watch or a similar one. Um, and I will get a little bit of a commission for sending you there from Amazon. But the price remains the same for you and it's it's a way to support the channel if you're interested. So indoor, let's go quickly there. Same thing as outdoor, just nothing special there. Um, yeah, I think we'll skip those and we'll go straight to rate, uh, sorry, the workout profile, which is really where it gets fancy a little bit and maybe where you could experiment with being more creative in terms of how you set it up. So let's suppose I'm doing an interval session and well, I have um, I have my uh, my time and my distance and my pace and my heart rate like usual, but you can see it's it's lap time and lap distance rather than distance and time. And that's because if I'm doing 10 times a kilometer or you know five times 800 meters or whatever, I want it to show the current lap that I'm currently running. I don't want it to show the total distance for the whole session, right? Then, okay, I, I, crossed a, I crossed a line at the 400 meter, if I'm doing 400 meter reps, let's say, I crossed a 400 meter line at the track and I don't, wor I don't really care if it says 0.39 because the GPS isn't as accurate as the actual measured track is. So I rely on the track and I click manual lap, which is down here. All the, all the watches has a, has a manual, manual lap button. So you, you click lap and it logs the lap and okay, it starts a new lap now. And that's my recovery lap, right? So while I'm recovering, I can go to the next screen, have a look at last lap time. What was my time for the last lap? What was the distance, if that's relevant? What was my cadence for the last lap? What was my average pace for the last lap? So just like a little bit of a recap, you know, in the second screen there. And last screen shows the timer the amount of laps total and the distance, the time and distance total for the for the whole session. So that just keeps track of the totals. So I might have a look at those in between and during recovery. And then I come back to this one, which shows me maybe now that my lap time is approaching one minute and maybe I have one minute rest. So that means I'm getting ready to do the next rep. It comes to one minute or maybe I'm doing 200 meter jog in between each rep. And as soon as it hits 200 meters or if I feel like now is the time maybe I'm on the track and I've run the 200 meter then I'm just clicking the lap button again and starts over again another lap um, of course you could uh, go in here uh, let's see activity settings and you can uh, turn on manual lap which is what I have now uh, or you could turn on auto lap and put it to, to lap every 500 meters if that's what you're doing or every every 800 or every thousand or whatever, but then it's going to rely on the GPS. And if you if you're at a track and you have a measured distance, you probably just want to stick to manual lap. Um, and if you are just not having a measured track, then you could rely on the GPS and, and let the watch auto lap it for you. So that's that's really it. That's really my setup. I used to have a different profile that was that was called like well it's not here anymore now but it was called uh, run advanced where I had this screen as my base screen and then I went to the next screen and it showed like uh, things like uh, cadence vertical oscillation um, ground contact time these these sort of uh, advanced metrics in terms of running um, form running dynamics but. I found that it wasn't too sort of useful looking at that while I'm running. I'm, I'd rather look at it after the run uh, in my Garmin Connect uh, or on Strava. So I prefer just looking at things afterwards and during the run, just focusing on the relevant things like pace, heart rate, distance and time. It's really that simple. You don't really need it to do that much more. Uh, so that's my setup. Tell me guys how you like to set up your watch. I would love to hear that. Follow me on Strava, of course, there's a link in the description and also follow me on Instagram to see what my training is like and you can see all the data from every run. I write a log every time and thanks for watching. Bye.